So, like I said, I was, I was born and brought up in England. Uh, for me, the, the business ventures in England were far more easier. Everything was done by the book. The protocols were easy to follow. Um, I made a lot of money. Um, it took a lot of time, but I, I, when I started making money, it, it really sort of worked well um, and things fell into place. For me, um, it was easy to have my board meetings, my various video conference calls. I could literally run my business off a mobile phone today. It's the best piece of equipment and it's, <laughs> it's God's gift if you use it properly. Um, when I moved to India, with all due respect, like I said, in the last 10 years I've been here, I've seen my biggest failures and it only happened because of lack of understanding. To make things work and happen, you have to know people. And, and I don't like this whole thing of greasing palms. For me, I'm very strictly against it. So the minute somebody asks me something, I step back and say, sorry, it's, it's not happening. So it's taken me longer because I've not sort of, as I say, horses for courses. I've not been that horse for this course, um, but it's taken seven, eight years to understand and uh, and to play the game and to get used to the game over here. And now things are falling into place. So there are many ways to um, not pay tax and there's nothing wrong with it. So if you invest in the right places, you can use that allowance, use the rules, understand the rules and then decide how you want to implement them. So I think that's a very important thing. Any venture you get into, figure out what the do's are, what the don'ts are, and figure out the gray line where you hire the top people in the field. India has got a lot of opportunity. It's, it's like I said, it's got the numbers and the volume and there's so much you can do here, but it's just about that getting it right and figuring sometimes you can't do everything by the book. So when you're not doing it by the book, you've just got to make sure it's still legal. Um, and it, there, there is a lot of gray and you just have to make it the new black. <laughs> So I feel it's going to be very difficult to compete against China. Whilst the Chinese app ban is there, great. The minute it opens and all the Chinese apps come back into India, we're going to, we're going to see um, a lot of apps shut down. And that is, that is the reality of it. So how do we do it? it, it it's back up to Innovation Startup India. If, if India is supporting us now, I just hope it's not because of the, the border issues that they've shut everything down for China. And the minute things get uh, friendly again, they're going to let us in. Because today, if an Indian app tries to launch in China, it is next to impossible. Uh, you have to take their payment gateways. Uh, as you've seen, they don't allow Gmail, WhatsApp. They have everything is their infrastructure and their ecosystem. So India needs to follow suit. We're, we're the second largest population in the world. We can be self-reliant, you know, self but it means the government supporting Vocal for Local and Made in India, not just a phase and not just um, a, a PR gimmick. Um, if the doors open again, I feel it's going to be the death of a lot of uh, startup innovation China, uh, Indian apps. We need to have that space, that breathing space to, to put a foot in the market. And then if it's a year down the line, I think the best products will succeed. Um, and the fact that we're now more compassionate towards India and Indian products, I, I, I see a lot of uh, startups becoming uh, uh, sunicorns and unicorns in the future. So um, yeah, it's going to be a, a lot of faith in the government to say that, you know what, we're going to put India first and uh, Innovation India is going to be priority for us. So data science is very, very key and very important to every business. If you do not data crunch, <clears throat> you'll not have the facts and the figures that you need to go forward. You could end up spending in, sp in startups on your marketing because I believe every dollar needs to go into marketing once you've got your product right to get people to your platform. But if you're not analyzing the data that's coming through, if you're not seeing um, how your product's doing, what the response is, what every touch of the app or button that's happening, uh, which buttons are not being touched that you created in your app. Um, if you're not evaluating this data, you're not going to be able to um, evolve your product into the final piece that people need to see. So if you look at Google um, 10, 15 years back um, and Twitter and Facebook and TikTok, what they were and what they are today, it's only because of the data crunching and the data analytics that they've, uh, they've taken forward. So I myself am seeking a, a data scientist and a really good one to come on board uh, to data crunch and, and tell us what's needed. Um, and it's not just people from that walk of life, your corner shop, you, you're going you're gonna to analyze the data. You're going to have a little notebook that says, today I sold this much of this, this much of this, this much of this. What do I need more of and what do I need less of? So um, that, is, that is key. You know, it's very, very important to make sure that you understand data and you analyze it. And uh, if need be, give it to your accountant and say, this is what's going on. Tell me what I need to correct because uh, the data in front of you tells you the true picture of what your product really is.